You sent us some research, 18 rate cutting cycles since 1970. You said 11 were out of desperation, seven were celebratory. How would you categorize this one? I think we're still in the celebratory bucket right now, which is great news for investors. And I say that because the job market's slowing down, but it's still pretty clear that we're not in crisis mode yet. So that shows that the Fed is cutting on its own terms and we still have time to save this expansion. Delano, agree, disagree? Is this celebratory? Is this desperation? We have talked quite a bit about the market slowing down in recent weeks, or excuse me, the economy slowing down in recent weeks. Yeah, exactly. I think it's still in a celebratory bucket. Um, one thing we're looking at is, is how fast we'll see the rate cuts. And I think it's dependent on the data that we still see going forward. We are getting data that's showing that the loosening of the job market is happening and there's things that are shifting in the economy. So I think right now we sit in the celebratory bucket, but that could shift depending on what we see from the data going forward. All right. So we're, according to you guys, both in a celebration mode, at least when it comes to Fed cuts. Uh, Delano, I know you're looking at something that's coming up this week. That's NVIDIA earnings. We've been talking quite a bit about this. We're going to show a graphic. We'll probably continue to show throughout this show and even tomorrow. Uh, NVIDIA, big weighting in the S&P, about 6 percent of the S&P, about 7.5 percent of the Nasdaq 100. The implied volatility after earnings, our CNBC data team says, it's a plus or minus move of 10%. So, Delano, how are you seeing this earnings report? Are you positioning ahead of it? If you're an investor, do you need to make moves to prepare for this possible level of volatility? I think what what, I look, what we looked at was late July, um, early August. We saw the... the so NVIDIA come down about 35% from its highs of, of 140. And I think when you, if you're looking at it from a good entry point, around 90 to $100 was a good entry point. And that's where we took a little bit of, of, of action there. I think right now you want to hold through earnings. I think they will perform well. If you look at over the last two quarters, they've done really well on earnings. Despite being at some points supply constrained, I think there's still some upside room there. But we like the position right now where we're holding. We do see long-term value in NVIDIA and the growth into, into their valuation. Uh, but right now we like our position. Uh, Callie, how are you seeing this NVIDIA earnings report? Um, a lot of people, including Dan Ives here on the show last week, have a lot of confidence about NVIDIA not only meeting these sky high expectations, but also also beating it and that beat actually translating to gains in the rest of the tech sector. Agree or disagree with that idea that we're in a setup for NVIDIA not only to beat, but other tech names getting a, a benefit from that beat? The expectations are definitely high. And at Ritholtz, we look at stocks more on a sector level uh, than a single name level. But hey, I'm one of those people who sits and marvels at NVIDIA quarter after quarter from the sidelines. So yes, expectations are quite high. Uh, tech has been a victim of its own success this earnings season. Uh, but you know, NVIDIA, if anybody's going to pull a rabbit out of the hat, it tends to be NVIDIA. I think investors are going to focus more on uh, management commentary after the fact. I mean, hey, I am I would love to see a sales beat and an earnings beat, but I think management commentary is especially important in this quarter, you know, now that the AI story is cooling off a bit. So you say the AI story is cooling off a bit. If you look last week, the MAG7, uh, not doing as well as the S&P, not doing as well as the equal weight, but still having a very strong week. If it's cooling off, what sectors, Callie, do you think are actually heating up right now? Where would you want to put money to work? Well, you know, I want to be clear, first of all, I mean, the AI story is still quite compelling. It's just the expectations are still also quite high right now. Um, so, you know, as rates come down, as the Fed signals a cut in September, uh, but this cut still looks celebratory, meaning that the economy could continue to grow if the Fed is able to save this expansion. You know, I think that there are compelling opportunities outside of tech. And right now, with rates still quite high but coming lower, investors are being selective. You know, they're looking at other sectors outside of tech after a spectacular first half of the year for tech. So, I'm thinking about small caps. I'm thinking about rate sensitive sectors. I'm essentially thinking about pretty much everything else outside of tech. But this is good news. This is the bull market waking up. Uh, and it's especially good if you're one of those investors who hasn't felt like the bull market has benefited their portfolio. So, by the way, we are on record high watch. Uh, the S&P less than 1% from a new record high, that magic number, 5667. Delano, coming back over to you with the last word. I know sometimes you come on and you say, when the markets are really moving higher and pushing higher, you want to take some money off the table. Is this one of those opportunities? Or with the idea that we're getting rate cuts, should you have confidence just to kind of let them ride with the market and continue to, to kind of uh, keep your money invested? 
I think you can keep your money invested. I think if there's cash on the sidelines, one of the areas you want to look at right now is potentially being defensive. As you mentioned, we are at highs. We've seen a pretty strong run from tech and from other areas of the market. Now, if there's areas where investors are looking to put cash to work, being defensive right now might be a good opportunity. If you look at some of the big box retailers like Walmart, they had strong uh, earnings report and Target also had strong earnings report after rebound. So I think there's opportunities for investors that are itching to do something. Uh, but I do think right now, if you are have been in the MAG7, you have been in tech, this is awesome opportunity to time for investors to hold those up positions and kind of wait and see what happens through September as we get into October and the rest of the year.